Welcome to Ground Control. It has been a long time since I have introduced our Blue and Fly Series F22 Micro version 2. Long before these FAA restrictions here in the U.S. and elsewhere, so I know there's a lot of you out there that are looking for aircraft that are 250 grams or less that fly extremely well and have high performance. Okay, so this is one of those aircraft that can do that. So I wanted to reintroduce this aircraft. I want to give you just brief information on it. And then I'll show you a flight demonstration video of it. And then when we come back, I'll give you the rest of the specifications on this. But the battery that I fly it with is a GNB 550 milliamp hour LiPo, 3S LiPo. It is an ADC LiPo. I've got an XT30 connector on my ESC. The all-up weight of this plane with this LiPo is just under 155 grams, so well under the 250 gram limit. The, the airframe with everything, including the receiver, less the battery only weighs 101 grams. The battery that I have in my hand is 53.4 grams, so all-up weight is just under 155. Okay, so, um, and the thrust to weight ratio with this LiPo is 1.81, which means it has unlimited vertical climb, at least until the battery gives out. So, anyway, here's the flight demonstration. When we come back, I will give you the rest of the specs on this. It's a very inexpensive build. The airframe is made out of Adams Ready Board, which costs a dollar plus tax a sheet. It uses about two-thirds of a sheet to build this. It only has 11 total parts to build the airframe. It's about as simple a build as you'll ever find. So anyway, here's the video. A fun aerobatic flight on the GFS F-22 Micro V-2. I think I'm coming up on close to 250 flights on this plane. Maybe, maybe close to 300. Hard to believe this little foam board airframe has held up as long as it has because I'm not easy on it. Alright, let's launch. Takes right off. 45% throttle. Getting a little windy out. <laughs> Pretty maneuverable little park jet. Pretty good vertical climb. Pretty slick, pretty wide flying on the below. Pretty tight axial roll. Whee! Wow. That wasn't a very good loop. I got pushed by the wind. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. Yeah, that's better. That's a lot better. I can't tell what direction the wind's coming from. I think it's coming from... There's a crosswind, so... Turn it, turn it into the wind right now. That, I think that's where the wind is coming from.
Oui the truck Ooh, that's pretty fast that's pretty fast for a little full board plane <laughs> uh, awesome now I know I'm a little biased because I built it but but still I mean you can see the way it flies right cool it's so light I'm surprised it's handling this wind as well as it is Watch that truck. I always do that, don't I? Get too close to that truck. I'm eventually going to tag myself or tag the truck. All right, over it again. What's wrong with me? I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with me. Wow, that wind up there is a little strong. Should we go vertical again? If I can hold it straight. Whoa, that was small, wasn't it? It got up to altitude pretty fast. And it just kept going. It wasn't even slowing down. <laughs> oh! My timer has elapsed. I guess we should bring it in. Alright, fun's over. Pack it up, go home. Oh, I almost did it there. In the scrub! Man! I just once have to like, like to have a headwind coming down this lane instead of a crosswind. Think that'll ever happen? I don't know. <laughs> but regardless, it is a lot of fun. I'll fly it in the wind, I don't care. Okay, so you saw the performance of that aircraft. What did you think? For a 155 gram all up weight micro park jet. It has a 15 inch wingspan. All right, so uh, I gave you the all up weight the build is extremely simple, 11 total parts. In the show notes, I will have links to plans that you can download. They're tiled plans, and there'll be, there'll be a set of tiled plans and full-size sheet, plan, uh, full sheet plans in the, in the download, in the zip file. So uh, you, can, you can print the tiles on a standard printer and put them together and cut out your parts that way. 11 total parts. All the, it uses KF air, KF2 airfoils. I have a set of landing skids on it, which will work on any type of surface that you want to land on. It's only a three channel plane. The only control it has is elevons. So you have aileron and elevon uh, mixing to, to create your elevons. So it only requires two servos. So I have two 2.5 gram servos. It only requires a four channel receiver. I have a six channel receiver in here because that's the smallest, lightest weight receiver I had was a six channel receiver. I have a 10 amp Hobby King uh, Turner G Plush uh, 10 amp speed controller. It's ready for two to four uh, cell, two to four cell lipos. The motor is a Racer Star BR 1407 3500 kV. It is, it is spinning a gym fan ABS prop, a 3545 gym fan uh, bullnose ABS prop. And, and it produces 280 grams of thrust. Now, I have tested a better motor for this. I haven't got it on here yet, but I will have a link to that motor as well. And that 
That is the motor that I recommend for this, and it is the Racer Star BR1408 3600 kV motor. And not only does it produce more thrust, but it also gives you better efficiency at the same time. So it's a win 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 situation. You know, it, it gives you more thrust, pulling fewer amps, which is going to give you higher performance and better flight time. So this motor at full throttle in a static position, spinning this prop on a 3S light bill, produces 280 grams of thrust, pulling uh, 9.7 amps. So I'm really close to the top end on that 10 amp ESC. It has a 12 amp burst mode for 10 seconds, I think. But I've got about 300 flights on this plane now, and I've never had a problem with that ESC. But with the BR1408 3600KV motor, it produces 192 grams of thrust with the same prop and only pulling 8.1 amps at full throttle. So it gives you 12 additional grams of thrust pulling, what is that, 1.6 fewer amps. So yeah, it's a, it's a better motor to use. That motor was not available, you know, when I put this motor on here. But um, extremely simple design. I went with a double profile canopy on the fuselage. The canopy is just a, a, a fold and glue. So you can, you can download the zip file, print out the tiles, put the tiles together, cut out your parts templates, cut out your parts, you can glue, uh, hot glue all this together, you can have it out flying the same day Then you download the plants if you already have the electronics available. So, has an extremely wide flight envelope, it's very stable, it's very well behaved. Um, it can also fly with a 2S LiPo. If you want to put a small 2S 450 milliamp hour LiPo, it would be very docile on a 2S LiPo but um, you can fly it in a much smaller area. It has very light wing loading. And I have flown this with everything from a 2S 450 milliamp hour LiPo to a 3S 950 milliamp hour LiPo. So you've got a wide range of LiPos that you, you can, sizes and weights that you can choose from to fly this plane with. I handle the four, 950 milliamp hour 3S LiPo just fine but I like the lighter weight 550 for the greater performance and the unlimited vertical climb. So that's the way I play it and that's one of the things I love about this very versatile 2S, 3S, all the way up to a 950 milliamp hour light bulb. So I wanted to reintroduce this. It's been so long ago that I designed and built this. I'm definitely going to be building on down the road a version 3 of this micro part jet as well now that I've developed some new build techniques with it. So anyway, if you're interested in a DIY plane that is has the type of performance this plane has, that is, you know, the, the airframe cost is about a dollar. It's you know, you use less than one sheet of Adams Ready board and some hot glue. And then use markers or whatever to paint it up. But you know, about a dollar to build this airframe. Plus the electronics, only two servos are required, four channel receiver, inexpensive motor, inexpensive prop, a 10 amp speed controller, and, and you're going to have this in the air for very, very little cost. I don't think you're going to find a factory plane that has this type of performance for the cost. So anyway, I wanted to reintroduce you to that to give you guys another option for something that's high performance that is very inexpensive, that is under that 250 gram FAA restriction here in the U.S. So, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the air.